Hello, and welcome to Learning the Social Sciences. Today we're going to be going over mood disorders. So a mood disorder is a disturbance of emotions. The two most common are bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder. Now mania is a period of abnormally high levels of emotions and activity, and depression is a normal response to numerous situations. Experiencing depression does not mean that you have a depressive disorder. If you're experiencing the death of a loved one, the loss of a job, or an extremely stressful situation, you may feel depression. However, that does not necessarily mean that you have a major depressive disorder. So major depressive disorder, this is the most common disability in the world. Major depression is a form of depression that does not alternate with mania. It is normal to become depressed after a sad or unfortunate event, like previously mentioned, but if the person remains depressed for weeks or months after that event, it may be classified as major depression. 6% of men and 10% of women in the world have major depressive disorder. Now, to be classified as having this, you must have five of the following symptoms for two weeks or more. So to be having a depressed mood for most of the day on most days, significant changes in weight and appetite, little interest in almost acti all activities, sleeping more than usual, decreased level of activity or an agitated rate, fatigue, feeling of worthlessness or inappropriate guilt, recurrent thought of death or suicide, and diminished ability to think or concentrate. Difference, the difference between major depressive disorder and normal grief is the reason for the emotion. So causes of depression. Some people have a biological predisposition to major depression. Severe depression has been seen to be multi-generational within families. The biological perspective can point to the fact that certain drugs that target neurotransmitters are effective at reducing depression, which shows that it definitely has a biological base to it. But it also shows that if you are somebody who are experiencing or is de experiencing depression, that there are medications that can help you get over this period of your life. There are also environmental factors that relate to depression as biology cannot account for everything. Of course, various situations that um, come at a person can be the trigger to then go and form that depressive state. So we have seen an increasing rate of depression. Rates of depression have increased 10 to 20 times what they were 50 years ago. The average age of people experiencing depression has gone down. Now, what are the reasons for that? Of course, there are numerous, numerous theories out there. But for example, just TV commercials talking about medication for depression and medication for anxiety uh, and talking about the relief that that can bring a person has led people to go and talk to their doctor about that medication and about their feelings and emotions uh, where they have not in the past. Now, there are other theories uh, where we have Martin Singleman uh, identifying three causes also for the trend according to him. One is out of control individualism or self-centeredness, focuses on individual successes and failures rather than group accomplishments. The self-esteem movement, teaching a generation of children they should feel good about themselves irrespective of their efforts or achievements. So if kids are going and doing a running race and everybody gets an award at the end, then that award kind of doesn't actually have any meaning to it. And so the kid is not finding meaning in the event, the award, or in achievement. The culture of victimology, reflectively pointing the, uh, the finger of blame at someone or something else, not taking responsibility for one's own actions or what somebody has said or thought. 
So he has also gone and talked about learned helplessness and how that can be tied in with depression. So pro he, can, he also said stated that it's probably because of low self-esteem, depression-prone people are more likely to perpetuate the depression cycle by attributing negative events to their own personal flaws or external conditions they feel helpless to change. So it's going to that locus of control. How do you view the world? Are you viewing it uh, internally or externally? Are you going and saying that you were laid off for your job because of personal flaws? Or are you the person that are saying you were laid off from your job because your business couldn't afford to have you anymore and they made a financial decision which cost your job? It's about that viewpoint of the world and how it relates to you. So the cognitive approach to depression. The cognitive approach points out that negative thinking styles are learned and modifiable. So if you would then have depression and go to a cognitive behavioral specialist, they would then go and kind of retrain your brain in terms of how you're thinking or in terms of how you're viewing the world. That's what that kind of psychologist would go and do and help you with. So if you think about classical and operant conditioning, this is the area that a cognitive behavioral specialist would kind of help you with and kind of condition you to think in a more positive light. That does not mean that somebody is not going to be on a antidepressant uh, medication at the exact same time that they would be going and seeing a cognitive behavioral specialist. So there's an individual, Aaron Beck, he had his own theories about this. He suggested that depression is a result of negative thinking, which he called cognitive errors or errors in logic. Beck uh, identified three negative thoughts that seemed to come automatically and occurred without delay in depressed patients. The cognitive triad, thinking about thyself, the external world, and the future. Beck believes that faulty thinking leads to depression. And the question remains though, which came first, the chicken or the egg, or the depression or the faulty thinking? When you are going and having these negative thoughts about yourself, or negative thoughts about the external world, or negative thoughts about your future, what is it? Is it that you had these negative thoughts about the future, which then led to the depression? Or is it that you became depressed and then started to view the future negatively? So bipolar disorder, it was known as manic depressive disorder, but is now called bipolar disorder. People who are bipolar alternate between depression and mania or hopelessness and an overexcited or optimistic state. Scientists have found a genetic component, but the exact genes that are specifically involved are not known. For example, if you have an identical twin that is diagnosed with bipolar disorder, your chances of having it go up 70%. There have been many successful and famous people, though, who have had or have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, I have a list here. Mariah Carey, Carrie Fisher, Demi Lovato, Brian Wilson, Jimi Hendrix, Ernst Hemingway, Ted Turner, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Vivian Leigh, Frank Sinatra, Winston Churchill, Walt Whitman, and Virginia Woolf, just to name a few. The list could go on and on and on. So suicide, the most severe form of behavioral response to depression or to a mood disorder is suicide. Each year, some 1 million people commit suicide worldwide. And now there's a lot of statistics that people look at to try to understand this. They look at national differences. If an area is experiencing war, does that mean that their suicide rate goes up? Yes, usually there is a correlation between an area that is experiencing war and suicide race, uh, rates. Are there racial differences? Are there gender differences, age differences, other differences? So in terms of national differences, Britain, Italy, and Spain's rates are a little more than half that of the United States, Canada, and Australia. Austria and Finland are double for their rates. Racial differences in the United States, People who identify themselves as white or Caucasian are two times more likely to attempt or commit suicide than people who are African American. Uh, gender differences. Women are more likely to attempt, but men are more likely to succeed. And age differences rate increase dramatically in late adulthood, especially a young, among young men. 
So in terms of other information for statistical information, rates are higher among the rich, non-religious, and those who are single, widowed, or divorced. In at least 60 years, the global rate of annual suicide rose from 10 to 18 per 100 million, or sorry, 100,000. In 2006, the United States suicide rate was 11.1 or, or 33,300 people. Now, of course, if you or somebody that you know is having suicidal thoughts, please reach out and talk to people. There are national um, suicide prevention hotlines that you can call. There are texting numbers that you can call, websites that you can go to. If you are in a school situation, you can go talk to the school social worker or counselor or to a teacher, to anybody if you are having these thoughts at all. So this has been um, going over mood disorders for psychology. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.